A rapist was today found guilty of an attack in Ipswich, which happened 20 years ago. Phil Collins, who's 50, was jailed for 10 years. The judge at Ipswich Crown Court said it was a wicked crime. Collins attacked a teenage girl in a local park in 1990. He was arrested last year after police eventually proved a link using DNA. This case was um, finally detected as a result of a technology known as familial DNA where we identified uh, a family member of Mr Collins that was on the National DNA database and then um, we, working with the Forensic Science Service um, worked through a list of uh, possible persons that might have been linked to that individual and that brought us to Mr Collins. A public inquiry into plans to duel the final stretch of the A11 came to an end today. Supporters want a speedy decision. They're worried that if one isn't made before the election, the scheme could be put on hold again. After years of waiting, there's enormous pressure to get this project underway. This morning at 11.27, it moved a step closer as the public inquiry into duelling the 11 miles through Suffolk into Norfolk finally came to an end. But is time running out? After the general election, everybody's clear they're going to be spending cuts of various descriptions. We've got to make sure the A11 duelling final stage is not one of those cuts. This whole process of duelling the A11 has been, been beset by delays over years. So you'll never catch me saying it's sorted out until the, the construction is actually starting. Mr Clark is expressing a view that's held privately by a number of MPs who I've recently spoken to. Whoever wins the next election will have to make big cuts to public spending and the feeling is that the roads budget will be in the firing line. So supporters of the A11 fear that unless construction work can start soon, the plans may be put on hold yet again. I don't think any party can give any cast iron guarantee uh, about things, but it's in the programme. The money's been earmarked. We'd like it to happen. But note the careful language. He'd like it to happen, but he won't guarantee it. At the moment, the Tories will only promise to ring fence spending on the NHS and international development. And Labour's fiscal stimulus, which has seen road building all over the region, is likely to come to an end if the party gets re-elected. Today, the inquiry chairman said he hoped to deliver his report in April. There might just be enough time for a decision, but it's very tight. Andrew Sinclair, BBC Look East in Suffolk. The government's chief scientific advisor has said scientists should be more open about the uncertainty of predicting the rate of climate change. It follows the row involving the Climatic Research Unit at the University of East Anglia. The UEA's vice-chancellor has defended his institution over reports it refused to hand over climate data for public scrutiny. The University of East Anglia is already awaiting the outcome of an independent review into allegations that it manipulated climate data. Now it's been revealed the university breached the Freedom of Information Act by refusing to hand over data. And this coming so soon after the whole debacle of the stolen emails last November has been damaging for the university. A key reason why I set up an independent review headed by a senior figure of impeccable judgment, Samuel Russell, and asked him to look into each of the allegations made surrounding this whole matter and to tell me what is the case. It's because credibility is absolutely critical. Climate skeptic David Holland, a retired engineer from Northampton, has been making the request for the raw data under the FOI Act. Well, it would, it would help me, me to show that, that the IPCC is, is not a reliable uh, organisation for assessing science of, of climate change as it stands now. Climate scientists have rarely been under such pressure, but the government's chief scientist says this shouldn't distract from the basic point. We know that the fundamental physics of the science of climate change is correct. Carbon dioxide, when it's in the atmosphere, increases global warming. One unanswered question remains how much this controversy surrounding UEA will affect their credibility and the wider debate about the cause and extent of climate change. Carol Bundock, BBC Look East. The former Home Secretary, Charles Clark, has been told he won't have to repay any of his ex expenses. The MP for Norwich South appealed against the ruling by Sir Thomas Legg. Mr Clark says he's delighted with the judgment, which confirms he behaved properly. A half-smoked cigar belonging to Winston Churchill has been sold in Norfolk for £4,500. The former Prime Minister left it when he dashed away to an urgent wartime cabinet meeting. A busy weekend of football ahead. Norwich will hope Colchester can do them a favour by taking points off promotion rivals Leeds. But we'll start with news from Ipswich Town. Tom Williams is here. 
Thanks, Susie. Football fans, brace yourself. Have a look. Yes, that is Roy Keane, part exchanging his rather scary glare for a cheeky grin at today's press conference. And that's despite conceding another late goal on Tuesday, keeping Ipswich in the bottom half of the championship. They go to Preston tomorrow. Keane's unsure whether any players will be coming or going before Monday's transfer deadline. But confidence this can still be a productive season. Being a, an average manager doesn't, doesn't interest me. I want to be a top, top manager. And I, I feel I will become that. But obviously you have to get through these experiences where we're having a tough time at the moment. But I think there has been a vast improvement with the team over the last few months. And hopefully that will continue because I'm here to do a job and that's to get Ipswich in the Premiership. A new signing for Norwich today. Canaries fans will remember this moment at Stockport back in October. Uh, Norwich in white here. Great tackle coming up on Stockport defender Michael Rose. It led to a goal. Tomorrow, though, Rose could be in Norwich colours after agreeing a loan deal at Carrow Road. Paul Lambert announced the signing today following news that Adam Drury will miss the next few weeks through injury. Whether Adam injury happened or not, we, I thought we were still short in that, that area of the pitch. Michael's played a lot of games, been involved in a promotion season with uh, Stockport and is a, is a really good player. Here are tomorrow's fixtures in League One. Leaders Norwich are at home to Hartlepool, looking for an 11th consecutive home win. That would be a new club record. South Ends take on a very much informed Swindon side, but the standout fixture sees Colchester in fourth, taking on second place Leeds. This was the used game on Tuesday against MK Dons. How about this for a finish? From David Pratton, uh, but he's ineligible to play tomorrow against his parent club Leeds. And just before I go, a reminder about late kickoff on Monday with Matt Holland reviewing all the weekend's action a slightly earlier time this week at 11.20.